Frank, this Thanksgiving edition of Phone Booth Fighting is brought to you by Freshly.com, our brand new sponsor that uh, a lot of people that listen to Phone Booth Fighting are already enjoying. What you do is you go to Freshly.com and peruse their extensive menu of pre-prepared meals, always fresh, never frozen, being shipped and arriving right to your door. No mess, no cleanup, no cooking, uh, dinner or lunch or breakfast or whenever you're you're having uh, freshly because yes they have breakfast items too is ready in just three minutes cooked by chefs with the help of nutritionists and i know when time is of the essence frank all of the things that i just mentioned are uh, very valuable assets to have they are. It's one of the hardest things to uh, to do is to be prepared to always be eating properly, and uh, Freshly makes it very easy that instead of stopping by you know a, a local fast food joint, um, it's actually more it's actually quicker and faster and more convenient. Just come home and within two or three minutes you actually have a very healthy meal prepared. Love getting this ship this uh, stuff shipped right to my door. Gluten free meals, all natural ingredients, and right now Freshly.com has a special offer exclusively for phone booth five listeners here's how it works you go to freshly.com you uh, pick yourself out six meals you use the promo code phone booth and you get forty dollars off your first two orders the uh, the offer is so good it works twice so uh, your first order of uh, six meals is going to be thirty nine dollars and then you're going to eat those up you're going to enjoy those then you just do it all over again same thing freshly.com promo code phone booth and save another twenty dollars on another six meals for just thirty nine dollars go to freshly.com see what Frank and I are talking about this episode, Frank, also brought to you by LowTNation.com. When uh, a fella has to uh, fly around the world on a regular basis, uh, and uh, when a fella has a scary Russian that's uh, threatening to fight him, uh, you, you definitely don't want to be struck with the low T. Oh, absolutely. Uh, you know, the guys down there, Brandon and Jason, are phenomenal at helping explain, and you can talk to them and give them a call. Well, if you're even a candidate for it, so you don't even waste your money to begin with. Uh, if you are somebody they're thinking is probably going to need some assistance uh, to fix and get their body back online, they'll direct you to the proper, uh, uh, you know, getting the proper blood test taken. Also, you know, if you have a general practitioner you're very uh, fond of, they can help educate him and, and fully understand the process of what you're going through. Once that's all said and done and they get a good idea of what your measurements are, if it's necessary and you need to be on the program, um, at that point, it becomes extremely convenient. It's shipped right to your door, and you're explained how to go through the process very easily. Consultation is always free over the phone. You go to lowtnation.com. You call the phone number. As Frank said, they will find a lab in your area, and that's the only thing you have to do outside of your house is that initial uh, testing, and then uh, Low T Nation takes it from there, and then everything just arrives at your door, and you're on the road to wellness. Hit them up, lowtnation.com, and tell Brandon and Jason over there that Frank and I sent you. Happy Thanksgiving, Frank. It is a Thanksgiving edition, an early morning edition of Phone Booth Fighting. A little early. Yeah, I got over here to Stately Mirror Manor uh, in suburban Las Vegas uh, at an earlier hour, much earlier hour than normal, but uh, the house was already full of Thanksgiving Day smells. Mrs. Mirror was, uh, as near as I could tell, she was she was cooking and simultaneously discussing a recipe on the phone with she some relative. With Oma, her grandma. Okay, and that was getting handled, and uh, I noticed also that uh, the, the, uh, the, the table in the grand dining room is already set, and there appears to be a, a, a tea split off on the table. Is that like your kid's? That would be more the kids' area, yeah. yeah. But, but it's still joined to the regular table. It is. It is to let them know that they're a part of the family, yes. even albeit at, a, at an annex. And uh, but I did notice that the kids' table has a, a, a large formal chair at the head of it. So someone still gets to be the head of the kids' table. Yeah, I'm thinking Bella probably going to get that one. Yeah, yeah, they'll probably. They, otherwise, there there might be a fight. Yeah, yeah, and they, you know, Cage comes into close second, but you know. Hey, when you're that young, then two years is a big deal. So he's still That's working right. on that. That's right. But you know when his uh, his day will come is when when she uh, graduates and and if she goes, you know, wants to go off to college and that sort of thing. Uh, 
it's starting to come sooner than that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, he's already almost her height. So, no, well, no, I meant that that she'll he'll he'll assume his position at the top of the pecking order chronologically. Oh, okay. You know, because she Our was a couple of years old. Oh, is, there, is it <laughs> it's performance based survival of the fittest? <laughs> There's incentives. Yeah, that's funny. Yeah. <laughs> well, it is Thanksgiving Day, and uh, we're going to be assembled over here at uh, Mirror Manor. Now, it's going to be a short one today because Mrs. Mirror put us on a, a curfew on she podcasting. And, and Matt, when you first came over, I was just getting up because I woke up at 4.30 in the morning to help uh, Mrs. Mirror with the turkey because, you know, to move it around and stuff. Because it's, you know, it's a 20-pound turkey and try to manipulate it and, and then uh, get it inside the oven, and then it was about... 6.30, I'm like looking at it. I'm like, all right, I'm gonna, I got to take it. I, gotta, mm-hmm. I don't know if this is considered going back to bed or taking a nap, <laughs> but whatever the case may be. I'm going to the bedroom and shutting my eyes. Well, uh, this is going to be an interesting Thanksgiving because uh, that's what's happening over here in the mirror kitchen. Now, over at uh, the, the Hunter Chateau, I walked through uh, uh, Vegan Central this morning through the kitchen. It's kind of strange, and- your last name being Hunter, though. Uh, oh yeah, that's true. I mean, yeah, yeah, it's kind of a. a Is that a huge? It's thing. irony. It's a little bit, little yeah, bit. it's very ironic. But uh, uh, maybe hunter gatherer would have been more appropriate. <laughs> but uh, uh, the kitchen was in full effect this morning. I mean, there were amazing uh, vegan smells abounding. And so what we're going to do is we're merging, and uh, we're we're uh, bringing all the vegan fare over here. Yeah. And that's going to be exciting because MMA's newest vegan, yes. James Horn, is going to be here. Your uh, your 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 training partner. He is. He's finally, you know, he's uh, he's fully converted over. Uh, I forgot what he told me. Him and the wife sat down and finally watched. Mm-hmm. But you know, she's a nurse, mm-hmm. and so uh, I guess that finally that converted him to the health issues of being a vegan, and uh, and uh, he jumped into it full floor. I mean, like I said, I mean, I'm impressed. Uh, I think so far he says the only time that you know he has a cheat is if it's sushi. Oh yeah, that's yeah. basically. I think he's done it once. Yeah, in the last yeah, two or three months. yeah. He was telling me that. Uh, uh, or I guess, I guess, uh, uh, I guess Kristen was telling Jennifer actually that that they did because that's like their favorite cheat thing, I guess you know together. But that they both felt really sick afterward. Yeah, like it. It almost kind of their bodies had caught up to it you know, to the, had gotten used to, uh, to veganism. But anyway, I'm, I'm excited for him because now he's going to see the easy side of the street today. Like he's going to, he, this is the, this is the gourmet side of veganism is, uh, what he's about to be introduced to today. So, uh, uh, anyway, Thanksgiving is always a day, a good day in, uh, in my vegan household for eating. Now it's a good day. He doesn't have like faux turkey or, or what do you guys call it? I don't know. No, uh, I mean there there is a such thing as you can get in the uh, in the uh, the stores frozen. They call it like tofurkey, which okay. is like a tofu turkey. But that's if you want like a pre prepared process thing. Jennifer does all this stuff from scratch, so it's like a uh, she makes a meatloaf, she makes a green bean casserole, she makes dressing, sweet potatoes. Like you'll you'll see like my. There may not be enough room on my plate for like all the stuff she'll make, wow. and everything is done from scratch. You have to try a little bit. Yeah, of it. Try, of try so, by yeah. the meatloaf and stuff because I think you'll uh, be uh, you impressed. Know, hey, I always, say, I have no problem with eating vegan. Like uh, as far as uh, it just it's it's difficult, you know. But that's my I guess my biggest tarp on it. I mean, if I was a multimillionaire, uh, I think I would you know and had a chef on staff and, and all for it, man. But as far as <laughs> Well, there is a financial goal to set, Frank, because you, sir, are going to have a money-making opportunity coming up in a few months. I have it pulled up right here in front of me. There you go. Uh, Frank Muir is going to be fighting Fedor Emelianenko. I'm glad that happened because we were confused for a minute. We thought that was going to happen, and then we and then and then we didn't know what was happening. Yeah. Um, yeah. But now it's happening. Yeah, I was, you know, at first it was like, you know, this is the fight we we're going to try to make. And then uh, it was just, you know, a lot of confusion on the other side and when it was becoming official because they didn't want to release things until everybody had signed. Yeah. And so, uh, you know, I had signed from really early on and I was waiting for everybody else to go ahead and sign on board and say they were part of it, you know. And now it's official. So you and uh, Fedor will meet 
in the uh, first round of the Bellator uh, Heavyweight World Grand Prix to crown their new heavyweight champion. Now, when do we think that fight is going to happen? Uh, I think towards the end of April. It'll okay. Be, uh, in Chicago. Yeah, the Windy um, City. Wow. I haven't been to Chicago in a long time. Listen to me. I'm talking like I'm assuming I'm invited, but we're going to have an awesome time. I'm a backpack man. Absolutely. Can I finally be the yes, guy that carries you the backpack? Are the backpack okay. Guy. All right. Excellent. Excellent. I, I am finally going to get a chance to show all of these disorganized types yes. that carry the backpack on weigh in day how to do it, how yes. to have everything neatly organized. It drives me crazy every time when I see that. When the guys, on, well, I mean, you, you don't have the same weight cutting uh, scenario, but, you know, these guys that'll cut from, you know, a natural middleweight to lightweight or whatever they're fighting at, and they're just on death's door and they weigh in and they're, they need their Pedialyte and there's some guy fumbling around and he can't find it in the backpack. So you have to know. go, I think, one of two ways to make sure that works. One, it has to be somebody who used to cut weight yeah. a lot. Yeah. You know, so I think they understand. Yeah. Or a fat guy who really understands being hungry and thirsty. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Either way, you're going to get somebody that sympathizes with your desire to, to consume calories at that moment. Good point. <laughs> so you and Fedor, so that's going to be uh, sometime in April in Chicago. Have you spent much time in Chicago? No, I've done a couple. Uh, I think uh, actually I commentated the uh, WEC back mm -hmm. in the day. We had a show there. Uh, but honestly, I didn't get to see much. It, it, that's the thing. I get to go to so many places. And people will be like, oh, man, you were there? I'm all, yeah, I think so. Yeah, yeah, I was there. I'm like, all right, what was it like? I'm like, well, the airport was pretty nice. <laughs> the, the, uh, the drive to the hotel, it was decent, you know. I'm like, And then the inside of the room was cool, you know. I yeah. mean, like at, the, at that point, I think I even went from the event back to the hotel or to the uh, airport. And I do remember this about Chicago. We went in, and it was cool outside. It was, you know, definitely was not jacket, you know, uh, mm -hmm. you know, T-shirt weather. You were wearing a coat. But when I came out, and, and it was only a difference of about four hours, all of a sudden it was like a full blown blizzard. I mean, I'm from yeah. the desert, so I mean, you know, I've seen snow, you know, a couple times up in the mountains and stuff. But for the most part, but it, it blew my mind that it went from there wasn't any snow to like, oh shit, are we going to be able to drive through this snow? <laughs> yeah, yeah, it, it is like that. It's a it's a great city. I've actually spent a lot of time there over the years because it was one of the. It was one of the markets that my band was most popular in. Oh, so it was one of the few places where we would play multiple nights as far as just as opposed to just a one nighter. So I got to spend a lot of time in Chicago over the years. Very cool city. I like pizza, so you know and, yeah. I, and it's funny, I don't really have you know, like there's always that debate, you know, the New York style thin mm -hmm. crust, or you have the deep dish, you know. Uh, I like both. You know I, I mean, do, like, yeah. You know, to me, it's like, well, they're both good. They're just different. I mean, I don't even know if they're, you know, you really can't compare them. I mean, I, you know, it's kind of like saying, you know, what do you prefer, lasagna or spaghetti? I'm like, well, they're Italian meals, I guess, but they're, they're different, you know. Pizza should never, ever be any worse than all right. Yeah. Like, I, I don't know how you make pizza. You shouldn't be able to make pizza bad. I've never had a bad pizza. Yeah. I we, we had a, a bad pizza experience fairly recently and I was so bummed about it just because we kept talking about it's hard that. To I fuck was, up that's what I said. I was like I was like at a minimum I mean shit, you can pull it out right. of fro fro the frozen section at the uh the supermarket yeah. throw it in the oven and, and it's good it should be like sex you know i mean even when it's not anywhere near awesome it's still, it, it's still a worthwhile experience that's that actually how I, used to be i'm glad we're going there real quick because yeah. that used to be my uh my uh, uh example of, of when people go with pizza i'm like ah pizza's like women man <laughs> yeah yeah i don't have a favorite kind no yet. but obviously since mrs mirror i can't use that analogy anymore <laughs> yeah it's a good thing we have the door to the bunker closed yeah, right. and she doesn't subscribe <laughs> um all right now on the other side uh well uh, your same side of the bracket i guess we'll we'll say uh, and this fight, I believe, has been announced for that January 20th card in Inglewood. Yeah, in fact, I'm looking at the date right now. It sure has. Uh, is going to be Quentin Rampage Jackson taking on our friend, the American gangster, Chael Sonnen. Now, this is interesting. Uh, a couple of uh, natural light heavyweights facing off. But, uh, oh boy, if Chael beats uh, Rampage, you get past Fedor. We got a situation on our hands there. Yeah, I was thinking that. And, you know, it's it really, uh, you know, Quentin Jackson's a super tough guy, super hard left hook, you know, you know, hits hard, it's hard to take down. But uh, 
the, he's really probably one of the, the greater unknown variables in this tournament, I feel, hmm. because of his weight. Mm-hmm. If, uh, you know, you see when he showed up against King Mo, he knew he didn't have to make lightweight or light yeah. heavyweight. So he showed up at 253 pounds. Mm-hmm. He's not a heavyweight. So that extra weight took away his stamina, took away some of his uh, 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 speed and his ability to land that left hook. So that's one that gave a, a great advantage to King Mo. If he shows up at 250 plus pounds against Chael, I feel like that's going to be a much easier fight for Chael because you know he just he'll smother him, wear him out. You know, you know Chael's very good in you know the clinch Greco mm-hmm. style wrestling, and basically uh, you know just fatigue him out. Uh, if Ch- if Quentin shows up at 215, I think that he's one of the more dangerous guys in the whole t- tournament. Yeah. Yeah, well, that's uh, that will that's going to be the first fight of this tournament. We're going to be able to see. Like I said that's January. Now, uh, I didn't realize they'd already put dates to this, so this is cool. So on February sixteenth at Mohegan Sun, that's going to be Matt Mitrione taking on Roy Nelson on the other side of the bracket. Uh, a couple of heavyweights facing off there. Now Mitrione's been on a roll. Mitrione just handed uh, your opponent Fedor a loss. Nelson won his uh bellator debut via um unanimous decision but uh i don't know i mean roy is as hard as he has been to to beat over the years you've got to win over him um you know mitrione being a younger fighter um i think is uh um you know maybe in a in a, in a spot right now with bellator where uh you know, I, I don't. I don't know if it. I don't know if you necessarily say it's like his. Uh, <coughs> excuse me, his prime or something like that. But I mean, do you think that that factors in in terms of you know wear of tread on the tire at, th- at this point for those two guys? Well, I think that also too. It's uh, you know, it's a fight. Really, it's in. It's in. I feel Mitrione's hand to control his destiny. If he goes and takes a note out of some of the guys that have fought, you know, uh, Roy in the past who just stick behind, you know, tagging him with jabs and crosses and moving out of his way, mm-hmm. staying off the fence and just, you know, and, and staying busy. I think that, uh, you know, that he's athletic and he has a great jab, uh, you know, speaking of Mitrione. So he could win that way. Uh, and I don't think there's a lot Roy can do to make up for the fact that he's sh- going to give up height mm-hmm. and reach and just, you know, the freshness of the legs. You know, Roy's never been a guy who dances around on his toes. Yeah. So, uh, you know, I think that's a route to victory that if Mitrione is able to stay disciplined for 15 minutes and do that, then I don't think there's a lot of ways that Roy's going to be able to uh, stop that from happening. Mm -hmm. Now, if Mitrione at any moment, I don't know, and just, you know, he has a brain fart like he did against Rothwell when all of a sudden he shot a double from halfway across the cage or, you know, uh, and decides to sit there and, you know, bite down on his mouthpiece and knock Roy out. Then all of a sudden, Roy will be probably the, the one winning that night. You know, Roy still hits hard, and power never yeah. really goes away in, in, yeah. in men. He's got those short uppercuts too. Yeah, you know, and especially against a taller opponent. You know, I always think of the of the Tyson example, where Tyson was always the shorter heavyweight, but that's where his undercuts would re- uh, his uppercuts would really come into play. Is if he could get inside, close that distance, and then all of a sudden his height disadvantage is kind of helpful yeah. to and shoot also those too, uppercuts. The overhand right is better for a shorter guy to throw on a taller mm, guy. Right, right, and that's the number one punch that Roy is great at, and yeah. probably has. You know, arguably probably the greatest overhand right in MMA. If you mm-hmm. think about it, if we go, across, you know, on how many knockouts he's caused with that mm-hmm. thing and who he's knocked out with that thing, who has a better overhand right? Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, who has more credentials behind it? I mean, to the point to where it's almost hurt Roy. Roy is actually a very good mixed martial artist. That's why he's coached guys on the side. He's extremely knowledgeable. If you sit down and talk to Roy, the guy ain't smart, man. Mm-hmm. He knows his shit. Mm-hmm. The problem is, I think sometimes he runs into is that he is physically very gifted at certain techniques, and it's pretty much like, well, I'm great at this, and I'm always one punch away from winning with this. I'm gonna just stick to it, you mm-hmm. know. And and that's why you haven't really seen Roy evolve too much uh, over the years compared to some other people. Where it's like, well, you know, he's gotten better at this. This guy's gotten better at that. And Roy, it's like, well, fuck, man. If that overhand right hits you, man, your family might be visiting you at the cemetery. Mm-hmm. Um, everything else, eh, you know, <laughs> livable. 
And the uh, last uh, fight of the tournament, of the first round anyway, is going to be uh, in May. Uh, Ryan Bader, the uh, Bellator light heavyweight champion, is going to be taking on King Mo. Now, I guess that's going to be a little bit of a, of a test to see who can, uh, who can wrestle better, right? I mean, you're talking about both guys who bring wrestling backgrounds. Yeah, and, uh, you know, Bader's also a very big light heavyweight, mm-hmm. and, and, and King Mo, I, I still think, is really more of a middleweight, to be mm-hmm. honest with you. He's fought at middleweight. Yeah. I think that he has the frame for middleweight that if he really wanted to, you know, uh, you know be at middleweight, mm-hmm. that's, I think, more his weight class. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think that a Mo has, is probably the, the more versatile striker with his boxing and movement on his feet. Uh, but Bader just has, you know, phenomenal power. If he touches you with that right hand, uh, King Mo's going to fall down. Uh, and, I, and I think this is really going to come to can King Mo outslick him for 15 minutes, or is, you know, Bader going to get a hold of him at one point and just crush him? Mm-hmm. So I think that's, it's actually probably one of the closer matchups where I'm like, I really don't know. I'm thinking Bader because of the superior power, but uh, and, and he's not going to get out wrestled by uh, King Mo. But uh, you know, Mo is slick and, and very capable of maybe you know, you know, using some agility and movement and angles to try to frustrate Bader. You know, Bader is still very much you know, kind of reminds me of a tank. You even see when he moves on his feet, he's not the slickest guy in the world. He kind of marches his feet. You know, he's very uh, you know, he can't dance for shit. I guarantee. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? You just see that there's just not that rhythmic movement to his body yeah. you know but uh you know i've trained with him before when he was on the show just even on the tryouts and fucker is strong mm. you know and then i've seen him hit pads and i've and i've been and i've cornered against him and seen him touch guys and you know they fall down you know who'd you corner against him Vinny Magalesh. oh is this on the show yeah oh well, right for the ultimate fighter yeah finale. right right yeah, yeah. Uh, he won the ultimate fighter yeah. knocking out Vinny. i mean went out there and landed a punch and Vinny. you know yeah, and, and I've held pads for him. You know, when we did the tryouts, and I felt the power that Bader has, and he hits hard. Mm-hmm. So you think that in terms of because some people are going to look at this and like we were just talking about, like uh, with with King Mo, you know, being a guy who could uh, you know legitimately make a case for for being at middleweight. Uh, some people are going to look at the light heavyweights and go, oh gosh, they're going to have to go up and try to fight these monsters at heavyweight. But some guys physically. Uh, may have an easier time doing that than others. You're yeah. saying Bader might be one of those guys. Well, and also, too, like none of the heavyweights in the division are huge heavyweights. Mm-hmm. None of us are guys that are really going to be cutting down from 285. And, and that's the problem with the light heavyweights. If, you know, let's even say, you know, they have success on that night. It's, you know, well, why don't, you know, you know, if Bader, let's say, does very well against some of the heavyweights. And you're like, well, how come he doesn't move up to heavyweight? I'm like, well, it's consistency. Mm-hmm. Bader can do well against the, the heavyweights that weigh 250. You know, or less. But when you start running into those guys that weigh 290 pounds, yeah, and they're cutting down to 265 and rehydrating up back to 285 the night of the fight. It's like that's a lot of size, and now all of a sudden it starts taking technique out of the equation. Yeah. So as we sit here uh, for uh, Thanksgiving, and you got this next fight booked uh, in April, is this the furthest out you have? Yeah. You can remember having a fight booked. Yeah. Yeah, uh, how's that feel? It's, it's nice, right? Yeah. I mean, just to have the... Do you like it, or does that seem like that adds a level of tension to it? Mm, no, I mean... Uh, Seems like that would be good. Yeah, it's, I, I see it as all positive. More preparation uh, time. Yeah, more, more yeah. prep, and you can start slower, you know? Yeah. A lot of times, you know, you know, if you're coming off of an injury or something's happening, like, all right, you got to fight in two weeks. It's like, all right, shit, I got to switch gears. Mm-hmm. There's not a lot of time to... Uh, uh, you know, well, you know, we're gonna start off slow. You're like slow, motherfucker. We got, you know, yeah. <laughs> you only got six more weeks of sparring left. If we give up two weeks right now, then we're down to a month. You know, mm-hmm. uh, and so this is a situation where you're like, all right, you know, we can start off here real slow, like I have been now. You know, and working our way up, and then I have scheduled breaks in towards like, all right, we're gonna train at a certain pace at a certain level. And once we hit this area, I'm gonna take a week off. We'll restart. You know, freshen up the nervous system, and then mm-hmm. start over. Mm-hmm. What about the the time off that you've had? I mean, now now that you're on the other end of it, are you noticing that that was a lot of time to 
heal up and you know yeah actually you know what at first look there's going to be positives and negatives with with taking that amount of time off you know timing and ring rust and all those things are are going to be factors i have to you know Mm -hmm. i can't sit there and go ah it's not going to bug me that's usually the first mistake when people get screwed by something it's like ah the shark's in the water hey can't bite me it's like ah motherfucker better address the issue Mm -hmm. and so uh you know i'm very much aware of not competing for almost two years by the time i step in the cage uh time off has a hindrance in that, you know, timing and whatnot. Uh, but on the positive note, just as far as body healing and stuff, you know, I, my body feels good right now. I probably haven't felt this fresh for years. And also too, just kind of have the motivation to be back training and stuff. Like it feels good to be in that lifestyle. And I think sometimes we take it for granted, especially when it becomes a job and you know, you're fighting all the time. You're like, well, yeah, you know, but I get paid well. And now I realize it's like, well, I don't really give a shit about the pay as much as I like to fight. Yeah. Yeah, it seems like if it had to happen that it's coming at the right time because it's not like it happened when you were 22, so you've missed out yeah. years 22 to 24. It might have come at just the right time where you, you've, you know, cumulatively built up the injuries and the yeah. aches and pains and things like that and had a little time to lay off yeah, of that. it was good. For, it, it, you know, I think there's more good than bad. Not mm-hmm. that there's not bad with it, but I still feel like the good is outweighing. Right. All right. Well, April uh, in Chicago, we don't have the exact date yet, but uh, it's happening. Uh, Frank will fight uh, Fedor Emelianenko. We're going to have to start – I'm going to have to start shopping around for a backpack sponsor because we want the right backpack because that's the other thing too. I need – I'm not just going to show up day of with uh, pulling a backpack out of a box. I need to I need to examine it, and I probably need to work with it a little bit. You know, like a couple test runs. Yeah, exactly. Like breaking in a catcher's mitt. You know, I mean, you need to. You I can need, see it yeah. now. You're gonna be at home, Jen's gonna be by the sink doing this. You can see how fast you can. Yeah, exactly. It. Yeah, yeah. We'll drill. We need to drill with it. Yeah, yeah, yeah for yeah, sure. You know, sparring. You know. All right. Okay. Well, we're putting the call out then. We need a, a good backpack sponsor for uh, Frank's uh, training camp. All right, Frank. We've got about ten more minutes before uh, Mrs. Mir is uh, uh, going to tell us we have to start uh, focusing on uh, getting the table ready here. So uh, we can kind of go any direction you want here. But I was going to ask you because a lot of times I like to think that I am uh, a general, generally intellectually curious person, and I pay attention to current events and I know things that are going on and who's involved in them. But I had to have. Jennifer explained to me the other day who this LeVar Ball is. Do you have any idea who this guy is? That Do you not know either? Okay, oh. good. I don't feel so dumb. Okay. Who's LeVar so Ball? He's a guy. All right, you know the three. And I look on the news all yeah, the time. Is he, he in the news? Yes, he is. And here's why he's in the news. You know the three. Local news? Or? No, national. You know the three UCLA basketball players? That, okay, yeah, yeah, okay, yeah. Okay, those guys, right? Okay, one of them is his son. Okay, so the guys that were in China and then Trump, right that were stealing from the stores, they shoplifted the sunglasses, and they were facing like a five to ten year prison sentence. And uh, Trump gets them, get you know, talks to Xi over there, and they get them back over here. Yeah, I, I didn't understand that. Yeah, like how it happened or what? No, no, no like yeah, how do you if you break a, a, a law? Yeah. Like, so does that mean, like, if if you or I go over there and break a law, we get to get off too? Depending on who wants to intervene on our behalf. Here's what happens. But, but what's the purpose of intervening? It isn't I'll, like you can sit there and go, yeah. these guys are autistic. They didn't get it. You know what right. I mean? Like, I, you're like, no, no, actually, they're college students and they do get it. But, you know, if they're that retarded that they didn't know you're not supposed to yeah. steal shit from another country, uh, you know. Generally, it's a diplomatic courtesy because here's what here's what the Chinese get out of it. What they get out of it is the publicity because these basketball players, they're, they're you know famous. They've got a level of, of fame. So the Chinese government knows, hey, these guys, if we let them go, one, we're going to look like we're doing the United States a big favor. Two, these guys are going to be on national television going, what a relief. I'm so glad you know we were released. And the president gets involved. So all that looks good for another world leader. Um, because also to their people, it's kind of a message of, yeah, see there, you know, the, the, the great American power was very relieved that we granted them a little mercy here. I'll tell you who used to love that was, um, Kim Jong-il. 
Because he did it, if you remember, with the two female journalists that were being held over there, and Bill Clinton had to go over and get them. And and Kim Jong Il was so excited to have his picture taken with Bill Clinton. Like, see, to him, it was legitimacy coming over. So, oh, I can do you a favor, you know. Oh, what can I do for you, you know? And you're having to be a little nice to me and stuff. And then I then I let him go. So that that's I think what was a behind the exception. Is different than a bunch of kids being dumbasses. Yeah, yeah, it, yeah. Uh, it really bothered me. In fact, I think that's probably why I didn't even follow it anymore because mm. I saw it on the news. I saw the th- and I only knew that the one of the guys was the younger brother of somebody who plays for, uh, I think the Lakers. I I think that might be Ball. I think because I think he has another brother. Yeah, he has a brother that plays for the Lakers, and they were yeah. interviewing him. Yeah, I remember just kind of sitting there going like, "Oh, you know," and Trump asked to get him out of all. Why the fuck do you get to get out of it? Yeah, yeah. Well, they. This is a lot of the countries that have those harsh type sentences. If there's enough publicity on the line for them, they will make an exception. Because in a weird way, I see what you're saying. I mean, by the letter of the law, you're like, well, doesn't that defeat your purpose? But I think what they look at it, they look at it as a propaganda opportunity that it's going to show on a very uh, uh, international stage how tough they are and boy you're lucky we gave this one exception to let you out unless it's a dumbass mistake where someone did something where mm-hmm. you know let's say like you smoke a joint at home and, and, and there's a little bit of shit in your pockets and you go into mm-hmm. the country and they find residue that's kind of like yeah you know i don't agree with the guy having to be held accountable to the fullest extent of that mm-hmm. that seems like you know well it's a mistake you know what i mean like you know the, but if you know if you were buying drugs in the other country mm-hmm. you know it's like well dumbass you knew you were breaking the law like mm-hmm. these three guys being detained and you being president at the time would be their worst nightmare yeah because she would be on the phone with you being like you want me to make an exception and you'll be like how does this help you i don't think this sends a very strong no. consistent message if you're letting these guys out <laughs> not at all i'm like right. look i'm nervous when i go to other countries you don't see me doing shit you know? yeah i mean the, the the problem with stuff like this is that uh and of course you can always tout well you know you don't have a big crime problem over there but you you do with with those kind of prison sentences you wonder what kind of defense these not only those guys but just average guys just generic you know, citizens that don't have a penny to their name, what kind of defense they're getting. You worry about stuff like that. And I think that's why as Americans, we have issues with, with the way that they apply that sort of stuff. But I am with you that I would, I've been to China. I would never in a million years think, well, I wouldn't think to steal anything anyway. I mean, that's, that's part, that's number one, but then number two, yeah, just knowing that, you know, that's a whole different set of rules over there. You got to be super careful. Really, anything well, I mean, you're doing. And things that you. I mean, before they legalized marijuana, if I walked into a hotel room and people were smoking weed, and I'm in the U.S., mm-hmm. I probably wouldn't have thought nothing right. of it. I'm mean, like, ah, whatever, you know. Yeah. Now, if I'm in some of these other countries that have a zero tolerance for drug laws, uh, and I walk into a room and I smell, pff, I'm fucking yep. bolting the fuck out. You know, yep. I'm like, hey man, they cut off hands here, dude. I don't know if you realize that shit, but you know, mm-hmm. well, you know, some countries kill people over that shit. Uh, I'd be very aware of that, and I yep. think I'd make sure that you know, <laughs> fucking avoid that. All right, so I didn't know who Lavar Ball was, and until all this uh, hubbub started with uh, with Trump, because Trump gets the three guys uh, out, and. Uh, and I give him credit for that. I mean, you know, I'm not saying there weren't other people involved in that sort of thing, but you know, he's he is the. What is their punishment going to be? Uh, well, nothing now. I mean, they've basically been pardoned. I mean, they're coming back to America. Like, yeah. I mean, they just. Am I a dick for thinking that's bullshit? I. Well, I'll tell you this. I no. So their scholarship's good. They're not suspended. They can. Play. Oh, oh no, they are suspended from UCLA. I'm so, sorry. I thought you meant like with the legal. Well, I mean, system fuck. Order, something but, has to happen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I think they did get suspended from uh, from the basketball team. And I'm listen. I'm 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 with you on that. That this. You know, I don't know that somebody who shoplifts needs to be sentenced to ten years in prison. However, oh, I understand. However, it, it is a big deal. And now is the time to teach a kid not to do something like that before it gets worse and they get more entitled you Plus know it's fucking embarrassing 
Exactly. Yeah. I, I mean, that was one of my big things on it too. I'm like, well, you know, you don't have to suffer. I'm like, yeah, but you embarrassed us all as a country. I agree. I agree. So here's here's where the controversy got involved beyond just the shoplifting part. So this Lavar Ball, the dad, apparently is a real loud mouth. And now that I've heard him, I can verify that he is. He is just a a self promoting like publicity seeking you know he anybody that will listen he'll do an interview and tell you about you know how his his kids are, can play basketball better than michael jordan and you know they're they're going to be the all-time nba greats and he's always he's always promoting he is like a clothing brand that he's always pushing anytime he's on kind of like joe jackson you know like michael jackson's dad he's got a lot of that that to him okay so these guys get out and trump says on twitter essentially well aren't you going to thank me like am i not going to get a a big thank you here i mean and and so the guys the guys give a press conference apologize for exactly what you said embarrassing the country the team etc and they thank him each one of the three of them says thanks to uh, donald trump president trump and the u.s government for assisting us for getting out saving our asses yeah and that's fair I mean, that's, 100%. that's, I would do that. Whether you like Trump or not, I mean, the guy did save your ass. You better fucking thank him. Sure. So now, um, LeVar Ball, the dad, is asked, because TMZ corners him all. He's one of these guys that they just grab at the airport. They see him because they always know he's going to be a soundbite machine, you know. So here, say something crazy, you know. And so he says that, oh, you know, everybody's talking about Trump. Trump didn't, you know, do anything here. Um, you know, he, uh, I had, I, this LeVar Ball guy, I had people on the ground that were working on this in China and they were really the people that, that did the work. And he just, maybe if he would have let him ride on air force one, I would have given him some credit or, or a thank you. It's all silly. I mean, that those are silly things to say. But the point is, that you have more political pull than the president of the United States. Yeah, but but the the point is, this is a this is that's a, delusional. Yeah, but this is also this guy's a, a birthday clown. I mean, this yeah. is silliness. This is yeah. let's talk about who we're dealing. You know, it's like we're listening to the professional wrestler cut a promo, going, "Well, that doesn't make a lot of sense." Like, yeah. okay, he's over there just doing a sideshow. So, so Donald Trump gets on Twitter yesterday. Oh, he bit. Yeah. Exactly. He Fuck. took the bait. And he, bit it. he says, it wasn't the White House. It wasn't the State Department. It wasn't Father Lavar's so-called people on the ground in China that got his son out of a long-term prison sentence. And then this is in all caps. It was me. Too bad. Lavar is just a poor man's version of Don King, but without the hair. Just think, LeVar, you could have spent the next five to ten years during Thanksgiving with your son in China, but no NBA contract to support you. But remember, LeVar, shoplifting is not a little thing. It's a really big deal, especially in China. Ungrateful fool. And a day before that, he had said that um, they were... uh, uh, He said shoplifting is a very big deal in China, as it should be, five to ten years in jail, but not to Father LeVar, uh, should have gotten his son out during my next trip to China instead. China told them why they were uh, released. Very ungrateful. And uh, he says that uh, I should have left them in jail. So that's the part I have a problem with. Because... Now what you've done is you want to talk about stooping to a level. I mean, this is like this is like some regional, you know, Kentucky MMA fighter saying something disparaging about you on Twitter and you taking the next three podcasts. So let me tell you something, Billy Bob, whatever. I mean, you you're above that. Like who who is this person? You know? And so when you have And then to say that I should See, Whoa. right, because the problem with saying you should have left him in jail. I only got you out and you're ungrateful, so you don't deserve it. And there's some yeah, ego involved cause, in that. Because that, see, now now, you, now that's your job. Like, that part of it is your actual job as president. You, know, you If there's an American citizen who's in a situation like that, it, it, doesn't, it's, it doesn't matter who says thank you and who doesn't. Like, that's just your job. And, and the president should be so busy. How do you even have time to know about any of this, right? Like, 
doesn't it seem like that? Like I'm it should be. Man. That that's the part that makes me nervous. Like you said, and I I was talking to a guy on uh, on on my Twitter about this, who's a listener to our show, and he was like, "Well, you know, so you think it's okay that you know he was he was ungrateful, uh, Lavar Ball?" I said, "No, not at all." I no, said, "This guy, okay. this guy sounds like a world class idiot, this Lavar Ball," and I don't like the fact that he's parenting anybody because if your kid gets caught shoplifting, the worst possible message to send him is, "Well, there's no big deal," you know. I mean. You need to, if anything, I would hope that somebody's kid would fear what their dad was going to have to say when they got caught. I mean, well, I guess it explains why the kid was shoplifting in the first place. Right, time. right. So that's, uh, there's no defense there. That's a whole nother set of circumstances. No, but I guess it simply can be just tied up in one where this is, you know, be careful arguing with fools. Yeah. But just the fact that the president could get drawn into that. Yeah, because if you're arguing with a fool long enough, it's like, well, who, you know, who's the fool? Yeah, and then and then you know you've got to have the wherewithal to realize that you can't say something like I should have just left them in jail because that comes down to your job. It's you know what it's like being a doctor. Like your job as a doctor is to operate on people, and it it doesn't matter how appreciative they seem to be if you yeah. save their life. No. You would expect them to be, but. You know, that's exactly. just your. Yeah. Uh, oh God, <laughs> it's like there's so many things like this that happen now that. You know, did you ever see Key and Peele? Yeah. Thomas? The. You know how they had that for a while. They did a great thing in Obama where it was the uh, emotion translator. For, for God. Oh yeah, yeah, the angry black translator. Yeah, where, like, you know, yeah. Exactly. Some people say that I'm yeah. not being emotional enough. And yeah. So they'd have the other guy, you know, uh, you know. The streetwise guy <laughs> talking we, yeah. like you know, what I mean? and so yeah. I think we need to in real life. Trump needs that for like, for example, if if I was sitting there, I'm like, all right, man. So what do you want to say? I wanna, I'm like, hmm, let's not say it like that. I get what yeah. you're trying to say, Trump, but why don't we just say, hey, could you imagine if I hadn't have intervened? You know, you know, something like that, mm. to where we could put like you know, to where it's like you know, put it into a effect that. I'm the only reason why you're not in prison, mm -hmm. but let's not say it the way you're saying it. You know, yeah. we, you know, there has to be some kind of like a you know middleman translator to be like, all right, let's not say it exactly like that. Let's say it this way because uh, I don't know. Like, I mean, every time I go to say something, I kind of reread it and I look at it. And you know, mm -hmm. I'll ask you. I've I've texted you before. Yeah. Hey, man, what do you think about if I say this? Yeah. Or you know, the wife. I'm like, hey, babe, what, what do you think? You know, like, yeah. uh, there's always that kind of like, hey, somebody else. You know. Just, That's the problem. Donald Trump has never done this. Like, hey, He's yeah. never turned the phone to someone else and said, I'm about to do this. What do you think? Yeah, yeah. What do you think? You know, yeah. I don't know. It's not a bad idea. Bring it. He needs uh, that. Uh, what do you think guy? Well, and, and you know what? Actually, I think just would have made the best statement is if the president, whoever he is, but I mean, in this case, Donald Trump says a couple of things. One, um, hey, you know, that's my job. Um and and I'm glad I was able to do what I can do. And then you know, if you want to add a personal comment, just say, "Hey, you know what? I'm I'm the father of three kids, two boys. If one of them had made a a very uh, dumb decision like this, uh, I know that they would have me to deal with, and they would know that. And and I just I'm sure that this young man is going to have a lot of explaining to do to his dad whether any of that's true or not just say something like that because everybody can relate to that everybody's got a dad and most a lot of people have kids and everybody can kind of relate to that and it just seems it seems presidential it seems statesmanlike and it also seems like a father right when you get down into this picky petty that doesn't that, that didn't seem like adults. Well, that seems like a couple of kids. And again, he could have done it a different way. You know, if he did want to go there, like if he was saying, hey, you know, I want to get this motherfucker. I'm like, yeah. all right, hold on, hold on. Let's go ahead and just, let's just, let's not detract from what you did. Let's, you know, you already, yeah. we, we got to win here, man. You know what I mean? Like, you know, you're looking good here. Yeah. Let's not go back and soil off our good deed. You know what I mean? Let's go ahead and just, you know, this guy's a clown. Let's just make it very apparent. Uh, let's go ahead and just do a little backhanded compliment. Be like, oh, mm -hmm. well, you know, I guess in the future, since, you know, you know, Ball has more political pull than the president of the United States, we look forward to maybe utilizing your skills. Do you have anybody in North Korea? You know what I mean? Like, yeah. You know, I mean, like, you know it's like, I mean, come on. You could be on. the Dennis Rodman Yeah, China. it's like, well, let's be serious. Let's just make a joke at the fact that you had people on the ground. I got the fucking Secret Service. 
that you even think we're in the same fucking playing field. Like, I mean, the, the field I play in, you're on the other side of the city. You've never even seen the lights. To yeah. it, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, so, you know, you could bring attention to that, you know? That's true. I just want, I, I guess, regardless of who the president is, I just want this to be a scenario where when some reporter goes, what do you have to say about the, the comments on TMZ from the dad of, you know, I, I just want the president to be kind of like, who? What? What? I, I don't. I don't even know what that's about. And even Sorry, there, I got other things. Right out there, the on. first thing that hit my mind on that would be like, well, it seems like. I mean, I don't know who you're talking about. I, I'm not really yeah. aware of it, but from what I understand of having to take care of and save his son out of a jam, he might want to be more concerned with parenting than what he's talking to TMZ. Yeah, you know what I mean. Like you sit there and throw a dig at him that way. It's like, it's look. Just, but it. You know what? It for me, it's just the. I want to feel like at all times the president is too busy to deal with a whole litany of things. Yeah, but he's he's gonna get out those questions and and obviously he's still human and he wants to get a dig in there and just i think there's a uh, i think there's a middle ground i see where you're coming yeah. from and that's the ideal area to be yeah and then i see where he's at right now which is the most unideal area yeah. to be i'm saying we could draw it in the middle be a well, little more true. presidential yeah and still kind of satisfy that itch to say fuck you to somebody you know yeah because you know we and people on both sides of the equation notice it like uh joe's one of our best listeners and conservative guy we debate politics all the time but you know he was saying he's like first thing he said was he deserves total credit for getting him out and then right after that he's like nah, he ruined it with the aren't you gonna thank me nah. that never sounds good no you know? yeah yeah you just gotta be like you know it's gotta be like the lone ranger thank you mask man like where did he go no, pretty much anytime you you know you, anytime that you point out that you're assisting somebody it ruins it yeah that's the superhero move is to do it and then by the time anybody realizes what's happened you've flown off you're off to save another damsel in distress i agree all right speaking of damsels in distress we have to uh, leave the bunker now because uh Before thanksgiving that's right. yeah exactly <laughs> it's not <laughs> saving my wife it's saving us from her thanks i'm already nervously looking <laughs> yeah. at the window like if she hasn't come by has she you know <laughs> thanksgiving preparations are uh, underway so we have to go join in that so in parting a reminder to go to phoneboothfighting.com click through that amazon banner why frank christmas is right around the corner <sighs> copy mid yawn too early mm -hmm. anyways yes um by clicking through the amazon banner doing all your shopping christmas needs wants uh, a small portion of your purchases will go back to us at no extra cost to you that's it. It benefits the show, and it'll save. Uh, it'll uh, uh, you'll do all your shopping just like you normally do, but you can help phone booth fighting in the meantime. Uh, also, uh, we have the uh, phone booth fighting merchandise section of the website at phoneboothfighting.com. Multiple uh, designs of T-shirts, autographed posters, uh, all sizes, all colors. Shipping now, just in time for Christmas for the phone booth fighting listener in your life. Roll that up and stuff that in their stocking. All right, uh, for. Frank Muir. Uh, oh, uh, tell everybody how to follow us on social media. Forgot one of your jobs. Facebook and Instagram. You have us at uh, Phone Booth Fighting, Snapchat, or and Twitter. You can find us at Phone Booth Fight. That's it. For Frank, I'm Richard. We'll see you next time right here on Phone Booth Fighting.